This is where bouncing on a trampoline becomes a problem <laughs> for those who want to. Let's have a look at the structure of the pelvic floor. This is looking from underneath you. So if you stripped everything else away, these, this, is, this is the group of pelvic floor muscles. So you can see at the top of the picture, those bony protrusions, are, that's the spine, that's the vertebra of the spine, so your coccyx comes down. You can see uh, the muscles then around the anus, the muscles around the vagina, and at the front is the front of the pelvic um, bone or the pubis. So that's, I mean, it's a, it's a, there are a few different muscles going on there. So this is really a group that acts to support all the organs that sit inside that pelvic region. Looking at it from the top, you're looking down into your pelvis. You can see, again, looking from a different view, it's comprised of a lot of different little muscles. And this is important to understand when we come to how to activate pelvic floor um, most effectively, um, because typically I think um, the cues given tend to be to do a vaginal squeeze. And actually that doesn't seem to be the best way to do it. And I've, I've discovered that a slightly different cue works much better for my clients. It's a group of muscles. It's not one muscle. It's a sling and it runs. You can see it runs from the back to the front. And as it contracts, it supports those organs uh, that are inside that, um, inside the pelvic region. Now, when you breathe, if you breathe correctly, and when I say correctly, I mean diaphragmatic breathing, your diaphragm and your pelvic floor should work very much in a coordinated manner. And that's what I'm going to talk you through today. When you, in, when you inhale, so if you think about an ideal inhale, it's going to look something like um, breathing in and lifting the belly. So let's imagine that you're lying on the back, we'll go through it, but you're gonna breathe in, bringing that belly to the ceiling so that you create a space in the trunk cavity for the diaphragm to fall down because the diaphragm typically sits up here, okay? And you want it to, you want it to lower down into the lower trunk, okay? You wanna give it space so that those lungs can fill. There's no good trying to fill the lungs if the diaphragm is sitting up here. So you definitely want it dropping down. And as it drops down, because you've created this volume of space by breathing, you've got to think about it as breathing into the belly. As you create that space, you allow the diaphragm to settle down. And because of the pressure now, it's going to push that pelvic floor down as well. Okay. So the two of them are going down this way. As you inhale, sorry, as you exhale, you're doing the reverse. So the diaphragm recoils back up and the pelvic floor contracts again. So these two should be working together, and they're often not because we're breathing shallowly. So we tend to just breathe here. Nothing's happening. The diaphragm's still locked up exactly where it was, which means the pelvic floor is not being used. And so we wonder why we run into pelvic floor problems. I mean, there are lots of reasons what we do, uh, but outside of that, our breathing pattern is a very, very big one of these reasons that we're experiencing some lack of coordination, lack of strength, and lack of ability to actually recruit those muscles. Also, uh, when the pelvic floor is working well, obviously good control of urination, good control of bowel movements, and a much better experience um, with sex. 